We love our pets, they're part of the family, but they're also pretty disgusting, from sniffing each other's back ends to eating poop. There's also all kinds of diseases that they can catch, which they can actually pass on to us. I've definitely had one. Have you? Hi, I'm veterinarian Dr. Alex. This is Our Pets Health, where I believe that pets are part of the family and I want to help you understand and optimise their health so that they can live the long and happy life that you want for them. And I'll leave the deadliest diseases till the end, but the most common by far and the one that I've had is ringworm. So ringworm, despite the name, is a fungal infection. It's a fungal infection of the skin and of the hair. So with us, it typically develops into a round ring, which is where that name comes from. It looks like there's a little worm under the skin. With pets, though, ringworm looks very different. It often causes crusts, but really it can look like anything. Often in the early stages, it's not itchy at all. Unlike us, it can be really itchy when we catch ringworm. And some animals, cats especially, are asymptomatic carriers, which means that they've got ringworm in their coat, but actually they never show any signs of that. Now, ringworm is spread to us through cuts and abrasions. So if we've got cuts on our hands and then we're handling those animals, that's when we're likely to get an infection. And it's also more likely in those of us who have got a compromised immune system. So if we're unwell, if we're maybe on certain medications, but also if we're young or older. Giardia is next. You might have heard it called traveler's diarrhea or deli belly. And what happens here is this little parasite lives in the intestines. It causes, can cause diarrhea in dogs. Again, they can be asymptomatic and they can shed it intermittently. But that then often gets into waterway. So it gets into the water where it then gets transmitted to us. It causes a really nasty diarrhea, stomach cramps, um, and it can also cause some serious weight loss because you really don't feel up to doing very much at all. Thankfully, it's pretty easily treated, but it's definitely one you want to avoid and a really good reason why it's so important to pick up after your dog. With this in mind as well, intestinal worms are next. Now, these intestinal worms can just cause worms to appear in our intestine as well, where you can get a little bit, a bit of diarrhea, stomach cramping, or it may not cause any problems. The big issue here is, especially in children, these worm larvae can actually start migrating to other parts of the body rather than just to our guts. And the most serious effect is where this goes to the eyes. This is something called ocular larval migrans. So migration of the larvae to the eye is what that means, where it can in really extreme cases actually cause blindness. Next, and sticking to the intestine, we've got Salmonella and Campylobacter. Now these can all be present in your pet's intestine completely without any sign. It can also cause diarrhea though, and your dog or your cat is going to be more at risk if they're being fed raw food, for example, because those raw chicken or whatever can carry those bugs, where again, it may not cause problems to your pet, but they could spread it to you either through their stools and that being contaminating the environment, or also through their saliva. If they're eating raw food and then licking you, uh, or if they're chewing on their toys and you're then playing fetch with that, that could transmit to you. Clearly, good hand hygiene is going to be important at preventing this, as with all of our diseases that I'm talking about. And the risk really is very small, but if you've ever had Salmonella or Campylobacter, it can cause really nasty problems, and in extreme cases, can be deadly. Okay, so we're starting to get to the really nasty ones now. Leptospirosis is next. Now, leptospirosis is a disease that many of our dogs in endemic areas, um, and I've spoken about that in other videos, are vaccinated against. So it's not something that everyone's vaccinated against. We're very lucky here in the South Island. We don't really have a problem with leptospirosis. So that's in New Zealand. The North Island though does. So it shows how different regions really can be differently affected. But with leptospirosis, the main way it's actually spread and transmitted to us and to our dogs is through rodent urine. So that's your rats that are around peeing on things where it then gets in contact with the mucous membrane. So typically our mouths or our pet's mouths. Now, if your dog gets it, primarily it's a dog problem rather than a cat problem, then they can spread it in their urine as well. And clearly, if they're contaminating, they're peeing in your environment, so that could be accidents indoors, especially if they're symptomatic, but just outside when you're cleaning up after them, or if they're in your yard, then you could become exposed as well. Now, leptospirosis affects many different parts of our body, so it can cause liver and kidney failures. You can get muscle pains, cramping, even meningitis. So this is definitely an infection you want to avoid if at all possible. And another reason why vaccinating your dog is important if it's in your area. 
MRSA and other superbugs are the next disease that your pet could spread to you. So they can live, for example, in their noses, which is where it resides in us, and it can be completely asymptomatic. We also know that raw fed animals may have more antibiotic resistant bacteria in their stools. Again, a potential source of infection for you. And superbugs are a real worry. It's one of the biggest threats to our health, we rely on antibiotics so much for our pets, but for our own health. And it's a huge reason why antibiotic resistance and responsible use of antibiotics is such a hot topic. And then the most deadly infection that your pet could transmit to you has got to be rabies. So rabies is a horrendous disease. It's caused by a virus that's primarily transmitted by bites. And what happens there, this virus actually spreads up the nerves and it then affects your central nervous system where it can cause seizures and ultimately it's deadly. Again, thankfully there are vaccines both for your pet, where in certain parts of the world, the United States especially, I'm thinking here, rabies vaccination is mandatory. It's mandated by law, so you have to get it done. If you're in the UK, for example, you can only travel to Europe if your pet is vaccinated against rabies. We can also get vaccinated against rabies. So if you're handling wild animals and rabies is in the area, that's definitely a good idea. When I did some charity work in India, we had to have rabies vaccinations before we went. I then did get bitten by a street dog. And so I had to go and have a booster rabies vaccination. Thankfully, that dog never developed rabies either, so it was all fine. But it's potentially a hugely scary situation to be put in and one where I was very grateful to be vaccinated. So have you ever had ringworm or any other disease that your pet's given you? I'd love to know in the comments down below. But for now, check out this video about why dogs eat their own poop. And until next time, I'm Dr. Alex. This is Our Pets Health, because they're family.